So, welcome back to my channel again. This is Kura Kuya Ron. And once again, this is another episode of the Mama Galing Sa Math. Now, this time, what I would like to share to you is how to solve for the mode for group data. Yes, mode for the uh, group data. Well, of course, we know that mode is the most frequently reoccurring value. So, before we will go to our actual example, guys, please click the notification bell and subscribe also to my channel so that you will be notified anytime when there will be uh, new videos that I'm going to upload. And of course, it's another way of showing your support also to my channel. So, what are we waiting for? Let's go! Let's start! Okay, here is our example for uh, solving mode for group data. This is our given frequency table or given data set, group data set, and we will solve now the mode. So, first, you notice that I uh, leave one column blank, which is the class boundary. So, supposing that in uh, the given activity is um, we have class interval and frequency. Now, we need to uh, have the class boundaries of a data set in order to solve for the mode because it's uh, included or necessary in solving for the mode. So quickly, how do we uh, fill out the class boundaries? So again, to fill out the class boundaries, okay, the lower limit or the lower boundary is simply the lower limit minus 0.5. So the lower limit for this interval is 18 minus 0.5 that is 17.5. Five. And then also to get the upper boundary, that is the, uh, the, the upper limit of the class interval plus 0.5. So that means to say we have 27.5. And then to complete the succeeding boundaries, well, I suggest to make it a lot easier, we will just add it by our class width. Yes, the class width or the width of each class interval, which is 10. So you have 17.5 plus 10, that is uh, 27.5. Then you have 37.5, 47.5, 57.5, and... Okay, we completed already the lower boundary of all the six, or rather, um, yeah, six class intervals. Now, to complete also the, uh, the upper boundary, we will do the same thing. So, that is 37.5. Okay, we completed the class boundary column. Now, if you can see here, I already uh, I have written down the formula to solve for the mode so we have mode or x hat equals x sub lb plus delta 1 the quantity of delta 1 divided by delta 1 plus delta 2 uh, multiplied to our i or the class width now quickly let us get to know what are these symbols x sub lb means lower boundary of the modal class take note modal class and then delta 1 okay delta 1 refers to the difference between the frequency of the modal class again modal class and then the frequency of the class interval preceding it or in other words before it and then delta 2 is the difference between the frequency of the modal class and the class succeeding it meaning to say after and also the last uh, symbol is I which is our class width which is actually found in our uh, table so let's start now solving for our mode okay let's start here mode of course to make it a lot easier let's identify each beginning with the first variable x sub lb lower boundary of the modal class hold on I think we need to resolve first how to find the model class or simply the class interval where we expect to find our mode and to do that 
modal class is simply remember mode is the frequently the most uh, frequently occurring value so to know that one or to to find that value or to identify the modal class simply we refer in our frequency uh, column in the frequency we will look only uh, the uh, the the frequency or the interval with the highest frequency in this case the highest uh, frequency is 15 here and this is its class interval okay let me highlight this one this is now our modal class again to find the modal class simply uh, find the class interval with the highest frequency that's where your uh, that's your modal class and for sure the mode of the given data set is found in that interval okay so what is the lower boundary of the modal class if this is our modal class this is our lower boundary we have 47.5 and then delta 1 okay for delta 1 the difference between the frequency of the modal class the frequency of the modal class is 15 here and then uh, the class interval preceding it before so we have 10 so technically you have 15 minus 10 which is you have 5 for delta 2 it says here the difference between the frequency of the modal class which is 15 and then the class succeeding it which is you notice it's also 10 so that's why we will have 15 or rather sorry this is 15 minus 10 so you have 5 our delta 1 and delta 2 happens to be the same 5 it's because the frequency before and after our modal class is the same so that's why we have uh, the same uh, result for delta 1 and delta 2 and last variable is i of course in our table our class width is 10 okay so i think we completed already all the variables needed in our given formula let's substitute now let's start with the x sub lb or the lower boundary of the modal class which is 47 so okay there you go you have 47 plus let's start with delta 1 which is 5 over um Delta 1 is, of course, Delta 1. That's another 5. Plus Delta 2, which is 5. Times our uh, I, which is 10. Okay? That's 47.5 plus. Well, that's 5 over 10 times 10. Well, actually, I can use calculator to do it from here. But since... This particular um, given is quite easy. Of course, I can cancel this one right away, which is 1 times 5. We will have 47.5 plus 5. And then, add that one that is, uh, you have 52.5. So that is our, or this is our mode. The mode of this given data set is 52.5. Okay, that is the whole process of finding or solving for the mode of group data. So that's how easy it is. So long as you know how to identify delta 1, delta 2, as well as the lower boundary of the modal class, then I think nothing to worry how to solve for the mode. So that's it guys. If you have questions, you can leave questions in the comment section. And also, one more time, I would like to invite everybody to like this channel so i think that's all for now guys thank you so much and have a great day